Okay, this is a demo for the non-objective five-piece puzzle. And first thing I'm going to do is basically show you how to go about drawing a shape. The best thing to do is to start with a perimeter shape. And then to break it up into five simple pieces. The pieces should not interlock like a regular puzzle piece. So, for example, this shouldn't have the little ins and outs like a regular puzzle piece because those pieces are made out of cardboard and when clay is fired, it's rigid. So here's an example of a design that would work fairly well. All the pieces slide together. They're very simple. Um, I don't think anything is going to get caught or break off. So non-objective design. So we're looking for just lines and shapes and, and textures but nothing recognizable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our clay ready to roll a slab that should cover this. So a piece about this big will work. And I'm just going to gently pound it into a brick shape. And then we're going to roll this out on the slab. So now that we have our pieces cut, what I will do is I just gently remove it from the, the puzzle piece and I take my finger and I smooth all of my cut edges. We don't want any of those sharp knife edges to remain. We're going to flip it over. We're going to do the same thing to the back side. And then while you have it flipped over, make sure that you put your initials and class period in each piece. If you only label one of your pieces, we don't always fire these together, and you may end up having your piece put into just like a group pile of non-labeled pieces. So again, I'm smoothing the outside, making sure I don't have any of that just really sharp knife edge. Smooth the back side of it, and again, initials and class period. So that we can identify all five pieces when we get it out of the kiln. Once you get all of your pieces smooth, you want to start thinking about possibly storing these things, depending on how uh, far in the class period you were able to get your work done. And you should always put your puzzle pieces back together into make sure that they're all fitting while they are drying because if you don't they will kind of shrink and warp and won't fit together well. Final piece is this. And again my initials and class period on every piece that I've made. And now it's time for you to do your five decorative techniques. So I'm going to go over as a refresher what your five decorative techniques and are and the best way to do these. So I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap clay. First decorative technique, the easiest often, is incising. It's the hardest to clean or do well, but with practice, um, you can make some great lines. And you want to make your lines broad and open. Um, and you, with incising, you always have to constantly work to get it clean so that there are no clay pieces in the line. If you hold your pencil like you're writing and you make your line, you can see that it's got like little ripped edges. But if you hold it like you pick it up and draw backwards with it, you get a much smoother line with a lot less cleaning. Next decorative technique is excising, and that's when you're using a loop tool to remove a layer of the clay. Do you see that I am not removing a deep layer? It's just a, just a thin surface layer. The deeper you go, the more likely you are to crack your piece. So just make sure that it's lightly done, and then always smooth the space after you get done. Uh, the next decorative technique is stamping. And stamping is basically pressing anything into the surface of the clay. I like to use wood tools 
you can use our clay stamps or anything. And working repetitively with it gives it a nice design. The closer together, the more interesting it will be under the glaze. Our fourth decorative technique is piercing. And piercing is when you cut away the clay completely and you make a hole in the clay. Um, one thing that you may want to think about when you're piercing is where the location of the piercing is. If the piercing is too close to an edge, you can break it out. Um, and if it's too close to another, another piercing, it can break that little piece of clay in between. When smoothing piercing, you want to get your finger or a tool in between and also flip it over, smooth the back side of the piercing as well. Our final decorative technique is applique. An applique is when you create a piece of clay and then you're going to um, slip and score it onto the surface of the clay. So best tool for this is a fork and slip. So what I do first for applique is trace where I want this to go. Then I turn it over and I score up the back side of the piece and the area that I'm attaching it to. Let's see. We're making score marks that are deep and rough in both areas and I already have slip worked in here. And then we press it down and don't forget that you need to really work that onto the surface of the clay and that you need to address how it's joined as well. So smooth around your form. A very simple puzzle. Work on your craftsmanship and good luck.